Hi, this is the part two of the GATE 2017 Polymer Science and Engineering Solution video. For previous questions, please watch part one. The link is provided in the description. So let's start this part with question 111. In this question, densities of polymer, amorphous and crystalline phase is given. We need to find percentage crystallinity of the polymer. If you remember this equation, then it is very simple. Just put the values in the equation and you can find the percentage crystallinity. In case, if you do not remember this formula, then following logic can be used to derive the equation. First, the total volume is equal to volume of amorphous and crystalline part. And total mass will be the sum of volume multiplied by their respective densities. Now, by substituting the amorphous volume by total volume minus crystalline volume, and after rearrangement, we will get the equation between crystalline volume fraction and polymer density. Now, as densities are given, we can simply put those values in the equation and calculate the percentage crystallinity. The answer is 56.25%. In this question, number of chains with a specific molecular weight is given. Like, there is 200 chains with 10,000 molecular weight, 300 chains with 30,000, and 500 chains with 50,000 molecular weight. We need to calculate the polydispersity of the polymer. Polydispersity indicates variation in the chain length of the polymer. A polydispersity value of 1 will indicate all chains have same molecular weight. Values higher than 1 indicate variation in chain length and also indicate poor control on polymerization reaction. The polydispersity value can be calculated by dividing the weight average molecular weight by number average molecular weight of the polymer. The formula to calculate weight and number average molecular weight is shown here. So we can simply put the given values of number of chains and their respective molecular weight to calculate the MW and MN. After simplification, we find that the ratio of MW and MN is 1.19 and that is the polydispersity of the polymer. In this question, we need to match rubber additives with their function. In a rubber compound, a lot of additives is used to achieve desired processability and performance. The function and name of some of the additives is shown in the slide. Based on this information, the correct answer is C. Next question is, a composite of polypropylene reinforced by 20% by volume of glass fiber is to be prepared. Densities of glass fiber and polypropylene are given. Now, we need to calculate the amount of glass fiber in gram per kg of composite. In order to solve this numerical, we have to calculate the density of the composite and then we can determine the volume of 1 kg of composite. As volume fraction and density of glass fiber is given, we can determine the weight of fiber per kg of composite. As volume fraction of glass fiber is given, so the volume fraction of polypropylene will be 1 minus volume fraction of glass fiber. Considering mass balance, the volume of composite multiplied by density will be equal to sum of volume multiplied by respective density of glass fiber and polypropylene. As volume fraction and density is given, we can put those values in the equation and then can calculate the density of the composite. Once the density is known, we can calculate the volume of 1 kg of composite and then calculate the mass of glass fiber per kg of composite and the value is 414 grams. In this question, we have to match the phenomena or step with 
polymer processing method. The first option is die swell. Die swell is a phenomena in which polymer melt expands when it comes out of a die. The phenomena is most common in extrusion. Therefore, while designing a product, the die swell is also considered. Similarly, breathing or degassing is a step during compression molding process. Basically, breathing is opening and closing of mold to allow escape of moisture or gaseous additive present in the polymer matrix. Plug assisted is a form of thermoforming in which plug is used to provide pre-shaping of the material. On the other hand, mastication is the step in the two-roll mixing in which the raw polymer is sheared and broken down to create an easier flow. So based on this information, it is clear that B is the correct answer. In this question, we need to match polymer with their application. Here is a table which shows the properties of given polymer which are essential for a specific application. It will be good to memorize common application of famous polymers like nylon, ABS, polyethylene and isoprene. Based on this table, the correct answer is A. Next question is, for the polycondensation of equimolar amount of adipic acid and hexamethylenediamine, what will be the extent of reaction if the number average degree of polymerization is 100? For a two monomer system, the degree of polymerization can be represented by this equation, where R is the ratio of different monomers and P is extent of reaction. For equimolar system, R will be 1. So the equation will reduce to a very simple form. Now, putting the given values of degree of polymerization in the equation, we can calculate the extent of reaction. The value is 99%. Next question is, Relaxation time for rubber band is 60 days at 23 degrees C. Then how long will it take to relax from 2 megapascal to 1 megapascal? To solve this question, we can use the simple relationship between stress at different time and the relaxation time as shown here. As relaxation time, initial stress and final stress is given, we can put those values in the equation and solve them to find that the time to relax from 2 megapascal to 1 megapascal will be 41.59 days. This is a very interesting question. Here, we need to match polymer process to their respective shear rate. It is very difficult to assign any specific shear rate to a process since Different parameters can be changed to change the shear rate during processing. But processes can be arranged in terms of their relative shear rate range. So let's start from the bottom of the list, compression molding. Compression molding is the process in which polymers are melted and compressed between two plates. So there is hardly any shear. Therefore, shear rate range for compression molding is 1 to 10. Next is calendaring. Calendaring is the process to make thin sheet. During this process, thick polymer films are stretched to form thin film. So it definitely gives more shear than compression molding, but still not a lot. The typical shear rate range is 10 to 100. Extrusion is the process in which polymers are significantly sheared to achieve desired mixing. The shear rate is controlled by the screw speed. So it has option to offer very high shear rate range. The typical shear rate range is 100 to 1000. On the other hand, in injection molding, polymer melt are pushed through an opening into a mold. Depending upon the injection speed and product dimension, very high shear rate is applied on the material. So the typical shear rate range for injection molding is 
1000 to 10,000. So based on this information, the correct answer is D. In this question, glass transition temperature and percentage of homopolymer in a blend is given. We need to find out the glass transition temperature of the blend. To find the glass transition temperature of the blend, we can use the Fox equation. As weight fraction and glass transition of both polymer is given, we can simply put this value in the equation and calculate the glass transition temperature of the blend. One thing we have to keep in mind that temperature should be in Kelvin, not in Celsius. After simplification, we find that glass transition temperature of blend will be minus 66.84 degrees Celsius. In this question, we need to identify different fluids based on their stress strength behavior. Newtonian fluids shows linear relationship between shear stress and strain rate, which indicate that viscosity remains constant at all shear rate. For shear thickening polymers, viscosity increases with increasing shear rate and thus shows nonlinear behavior of shear stress and shear rate. On the other hand, pseudoplastic or shear thinning polymers shows drop in viscosity at high shear rate. Behavior of Bingham fluid is unique as these polymers do not show deformation till certain stress value. Above this critical stress value, the fluid shows Newtonian behavior. So based on this information, it is clear that B is the correct answer. Thank you for watching this video. If you need any further clarification, please reach out to us. Also, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to receive notification of future videos. Thank you.